The Hello Girls made its regional premiere at a Taproot Theater Company in Seattle this month, and, the, and it highlights the true and often untold story of America's first female soldiers and how they helped win World War I. That's right, and today we're getting a sneak peek of their production with director Karen Lund, actors Cassie Q. Cole, Miranda Antoinette, Rebecca Court, and keyboardist David Taylor Gomes. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank Thanks for having us. Thanks for being here, everybody. <laughs> Amazing uh, costume. You, yeah, <laughs> we were just saying, we're big fans of the costumes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Karen, this is a story that isn't always taught in schools. We were just talking about this, which is just terrible. But this is an amazing opportunity for people to learn, uh, you know, the Hello Girls and what is so special about this production. Oh. I have to tell you, my father was a, a military history teacher, and I had never heard this story before. And beyond that, my mother was uh, the president of the National Organization for Women in Missouri, the Missouri chapter. And so you would think if anybody would know the story, it'd be somebody like me. Yeah. When this came across my desk, it had the two, my two favorite things, history, world history, and theater. So I couldn't wonderful. wait to bring it. <laughs> That's absolutely wonderful. And Cassie, I want to know all about your role in the show and what do you like most about your character? Yes, well I get to play Grace Banker, who I love that she was a woman far ahead of her time. She was college educated. She had two majors, as you'll find out in the scene we're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I love that she, that she held that space at such a young age and did something to, to pave the way for other women to do the same. That's wonderful. So talk to us about what lens the story is told through and, and what people can expect from this. Yeah, so I also didn't know anything about this story and I find there's so many forgotten moments in history, often at the expense of marginalized communities mm -hmm. whose stories were not told. And so it really is a privilege to get to tell this one because it does exist on a time continuum and this is something that today, what personal calls are you going to answer? Our very first song is Answer the Call and so uh, that's what I like about telling the story. Yeah, and you know, something surprising about the Hello Girls, they weren't even actually recognized as U.S. veterans until 1977, but they've made such a huge impact on our country, and even for women and their right to vote. Talk about that a little bit. Oh, yeah, this is one of the most exciting things about this story that I didn't know. It was one of the main reasons they kept women from voting was they said, well, they don't have to put their lives on the line for their country. Mm -hmm. Well, the Hello Girls proved that wrong, and so when they came back, very quickly, women, uh, have the right to vote. But wow. you were mentioning the fact that they weren't recognized as veterans. This is where it becomes an interesting Seattle story. More than a dozen of the women, of the 233 women who served in World War I, more than a dozen came from Seattle, Washington, specifically the University of Washington. And when they came back and they fought so hard to get their veterans' rights recognized, they did that here in Seattle. There was a young lawyer named Mark Huff who worked pro bono to make that happen for them. And like you were saying, they, it didn't happen until 1977. So a lot of oh. hard work right here in Seattle. Beautiful. To get that done. What yeah. a wonderful piece of history. <laughs> and we are so excited because we are going to have the opportunity right now for a little preview of one of the songs. So take it away. <laughs> Suzanne, you know you shouldn't call me when we're working. This is important. What is it? Did you see the ad in the paper today? They want operators to send to France. Who does? The Army, Grace. The U.S. Army. So they want us to train the troops? No, no, no. They want us to be the troops to serve as operators over there. Listen, Suzanne. Why does you have to do this? Why? Because I'm doing this. Come on. It'll be an adventure. It's war, Suzanne, not a sightseeing expedition. I know. And we all have to do our bit, but girls like us, we aren't cut out for tending victory gardens. <laughs> How many times have you told me you wished you could be doing something more? I have been known to say that. And you know how I knew this was meant for us? The ad in the paper says you've got to be able to speak French. They need the operators to be able to translate. But I haven't spoken French since college. Didn't you major in French? Actually, I was a double major. French and history. So join the army with me. Speak French and make history. The girl is mad. I'd never be selected. My French is bad. I could fake it. Je peux parler français. No, they'd find me out. And I'm bound to be rejected on the spot. But then just suppose I'm not. I'm off to France. My accent's been perfected. This is the chance of a lifetime. Can I let it pass me by? 
kind of number to perform from this production and what happens in that scene? Oh, well, you will hear a lot of really beautiful, rousing numbers like Connected <laughs> yeah. in this show. But my favorite is a very silly and fun kind of comedic relief type number. Yeah. And it's kind of your first introduction to a very troublesome character. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Her name is Louise and she was a French immigrant to the U.S. and she was only 18 and she lies about her age uh -huh. in order to serve yeah. uh, and fight for what she believes in and she sings this song that starts to kind of tear down the rules and there's a lot of dancing it's very fun and the title is je m'en fiche which means i don't care oh, <laughs> i love it i love it a rebellious woman how do you like playing a character like that is it so fun it's very fun <laughs> it's very fun i think i often play like sweet characters yeah. so it's fun to play one that um tears things up a little bit. Yeah, you got to do it. Uh, David, mm -hmm. I mean, killing it on the keys over there. Thank you. What would you, how would you kind of describe the rest of the music and the lyrics in this show? And like, how fun is that to perform? Um, well, it's very fun to perform. Yeah. And actually, I just joined the show this week. They have what? a brilliant music director, Michael Knighting. But that yeah. happens a lot in musical theater. Musicians pop in and out. Yeah. Um, but the music really honors the uh, period with which the story takes place. But it's written so that a contemporary ear will enjoy it. There's lots of what I call ear candy moments so yeah. like a lyric that just makes you go what yeah. or like um the harmonies the harmonies are spectacular and the cast just so tight and clean wow i would never have thought you just joined the crew here um i hear that you know the show is doing really well we're adding some more dates to the calendar how do people get tickets and how long can people catch the show yes well that's the exciting news is that we have officially because it's selling so well we have officially extended until august 19th you can Yay. catch this show on most nights of the week and you can find tickets on taproottheater.org or you can call the box office at 206 uh, 781-9707. Amazing. Thank you all so much. Thanks for bringing your talent here. Uh, we've posted more info on the Hello Girls and their extended dates up on our website, fox13seattle.com slash studio13live. Thanks again, y'all. Yeah, thank you. All right, you. coming up on Studio 13 Live, you may be wondering where Maria went, but we set her up to our weather deck for today's M.